Oh, is Doc here? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, there he is. All right. Uh, Dr. Rico, come on in. Doc was uh, on the cube last year at uh, SAP Sapphire. Doc, it's always a pleasure to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you again. And uh, my colleague, John Furrier, hey, you Doc. remember? Doc yes. is the VP and general manager of the Advanced Technology Group at, uh, at EMC. Do you want coffee or anything? I'm and, good, uh, thanks. All right, cool. So welcome. Thanks Here we much. are a year later. It's, uh, Here we are a year later and uh, bigger and better. And a week later. We saw you last week at uh, <laughs> EMC World. It's an amazing event for you guys. Congratulations yeah. on pulling that off. Uh, Thanks. EMC, I, I, you know, I mean, you guys are just really, talk about, we were just talking about Dell's transformation. Wow, talk about mm -hmm. EMC transformation. I've been following EMC, as you know, for many, many years. Yes, back when EMC was, was a memory supplier. <laughs> and uh, talk about a tr another transformation now. I mean, it's just, it's amazing to watch. I mean, you guys are really becoming a, a systems company in many respects, aren't you? Yeah, in a, in a lot of respects, we're becoming a, a systems company. But you know, our core uh, core competency really is information, information processing, information handling. I mean, it is ultimately what people run their businesses on. It's it's not the infrastructure around it. So it's uh, it, it's it's a very exciting place to be. Yeah. And follow this conference too. I mean, that's what they're talking about. You know, the keynotes this morning all about in memory, and you, you know, you can certainly argue that that. It might be scary to us, but it's not in any shape or form because, frankly, it's just creating more information, and the information has to live somewhere, has to be handled somewhere, processed somehow. Well, let's talk about so, that because yeah. uh, you know, I, I was saying earlier, I judge um, the quality of a company's marketing at events like this by whether or not the users are talking about it. So mm -hmm. last week, it was cloud meets big data, and everybody's right. talking about cloud, everybody's talking about big data. Maybe not everybody talking about big data, but they're talking about data, and yeah. people I think are still trying to squint through that, but I think that messaging was very good. Right. Here, it's all about in-memory, HANA, and, and mobility. And you right. talk to these customers, and that's all they're talking about. And, and so, you just alluded to the fa fact that, you know, some people might think, well, all that in-memory, geez, that's got to be bad for a storage company like EMC. What's your take on that? Well, I think it's actually it's very good for us, and frankly, they did talk about big data. I mean, Bill McDermott got on stage yesterday and and actually said the words "big data." Yes, he did. You we know? saw him last night, and we we asked him about that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah so, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I'd love to hear what what he told you, but you know, yeah, basically, I was just sorry to interrupt, but I mean, basically, he said, "Look, we we are a data company. We've been in the data business for a very long time, mm -hmm. and then we started to have a conversation. It's not only big data; it's." fast data and I want to talk to you right. a little bit more about that and flash and you mm. know project lightning and where that right. all fits but uh, but so so why is that trend good for a storage company like EMC well it's demonstrating the significant importance of data uh, and you know information uh, that, that I was talking about a short while ago, David. It really uh, demonstrates how critical, uh, mission critical information is and real time access to it. So, you know, all of the, the tenets of, of uh, you know, information stories that we've been talking about for all these years, you know, remains in full effect. And in fact, if you look at, you know, where HANA is today and you start looking at uh, what, the, what the early feedback has been, HANA is very exciting in terms of being able to meet some of those, you know, critical business needs of changing the decision processes from days to, to minutes or seconds, um, but the, the, the early feedback really is that it's missing uh, reliability, it's missing uh, resilience, it's missing the ability to uh, make that information more mobile, uh, and it's missing the ability to scale because information is continuing to grow significantly. Well, and the other we were thing just talking to CSC, and, and um, she, Sika came on, and she was really on target. She brought up the point of there's multiple cores coming into the market. Yeah. That's going to affect the compute in memories. Okay, a caching layer, and she's talking about the collision of storage, virtualization, memory, and cores. And what she was arguing was that there's not really a compute issue. Mm -hmm. As the cloud gets bigger, right. the issues shift. And so we were talking about, is that a new architecture? So, Clarify that. For, what's your angle on yeah, that? Yeah, to to a very large extent, I think it it starts to open the possibilities for multiple architectures. You know, in in one sense, uh, you know, some of the discussions about Hana here are about moving the information closer to the compute. You know, because of the analytics, because of the the computations, the you know the the literally thousands and millions of computations that they have to go on. And in some cases, it's not it's not that way. In some cases, it's going to be you know sifting out the data to to present it to a compute engine. So we can see a couple of architectures emergency emerging. We can absolutely see moving the information closer to the compute, but we can also see 
moving the compute closer to the information in some respects. And you know, last week at, at EMC World, you heard all about Project Lightning, and Project Lightning is a lot about that. Yeah. Right? It's taking some of the elements of, of the data store and moving it closer to the compute so we can move the information upstream. Um, but you know, we're also taking a look at how can we move some of that compute processing down into the storage where the bigger masses of information are going to live. The, yes, other thing, the other thing she said that was interesting, I want to get your perspective on, she said it's not about competition, but it's about integration. And she was referring to essentially cloud and cloud architectures. So mm. it wasn't about competing approaches, oh, but sure. more about integration. What do you yeah. think about that, that quote? I mean. Because well, you're essentially saying there's multiple architectures. I mean, they're not mutually <laughs> exclusive. Are they going to see a, a variety of hybrids? And well, I don't know that you'll see a variety of hybrids. I think you'll see, uh, you know, a couple of key architectures start to evolve, and then you might see some competition emerging in the, in that space. And there already kind of is. I mean, you could you could certainly argue that you know Fusion I/O is in, in in one hand some of the things that Project Lightning is trying to to achieve. But you know, we're going about it more from you know the shared storage construct where mm -hmm. they're they're not. They're trying to grow into uh, something more like an extension to the server. We're trying to grow into more of an extension of the storage. Storage, right? Bring all of the resilience and properties of the storage that, that uh, yeah. you know people love to ascribe. Surprising to us. that you come at it from that angle. Yeah, surprising, <laughs> isn't it? There's, isn't there a strange bias there? <laughs> but you know, look how but many she's got to integrate the whole thing. So for her mindset, her mindset is, hey, I got to yeah. deal with all these architectures. Ah, so you guys are EMC. You want right. to go in your direction. You have a, an and, agenda. And I love her quote. I absolutely love her quote. Uh, you know, don't don't get me wrong in, in any respect yeah. there. You know, I think the ecosystem there is is absolutely critical. But you know, I don't want to lose the opportunity to at least comment further on on the comment. Yeah, yes, we're coming from that yeah, the, yeah. from that angle. But look how many people have tried to enter the space and gotten it wrong. Mm. Right. So yeah. you know, there's there is a formula there, and you know, storage is not spinning rough. Storage is not a hardware product. Storage is a software product, just like SAP is a software product. You so know, with a lot of intelligence. Yeah, there. yeah. So yeah. Hannah, it's, I mean, it's very interesting to me because you know you're hearing a lot of buzz around it, and mm -hmm. at the same time, it's kind of a brute force approach. I mean, you've got this legacy software base, and we're not going to mm -hmm. put the world's data into memory. I mean, that's not going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys announced last week a Hadoop, you know, strategy, yeah. and. You know, we're not all of a sudden going to you know, go back to the data temple model. I mean, all the world's mm -hmm. data is not going to be in a box. It's out there. And we know that, and Google and, and Facebook and everybody else have, have sort of proven that. And so, to me, and, and I'd like the, your your angle on this, your thoughts. You've got to have you know a software architecture or a systems architecture to be able to go out and get those nuggets and then bring those back in mm -hmm. and then operate the, on those in memory. And is that fundamentally EMC strategy? And and can you you know sh drill down on that a little bit? Well, EMC strategy is definitely to distribute information more widely and make it available you know more directly closer to where the user is going to uh, consume it. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you still need to be able to aggregate it where uh, where that makes sense as well. So it's 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 not an either or in our mind. Uh, you know, information does have to be widely distributed and you're, and you're starting to see some of our scale out uh, architectures evolve to that. You're also seeing other types of distribution technologies like VPlex come into play, which will allow you to replicate that information. You know, today, yes, replication is really, you know, A to B, but replication down the road to us is any to any. And, and that's critically important as well. And we, you're starting to see that, not just about the core information itself, but see that tied into the mobility of the application, because ultimately the, the information and the application are going to go hand in hand, and it has to be driven from the customer down. You know, you know, Doc, you just mentioned VPlex. John and I were talking yesterday about um, how Star Trek predicted the future. You know, you, yeah. everybody talks about that. <laughs> yeah, and, the transporter. And, and, sure. and so, so, yeah, and so, right, we have the, the mobile phone. You know, we, you know, the, yeah, Wearable that, computers, you know, yeah. Kirk to Enterprise. Right, Kirk to Enterprise. <laughs> and, and, you know, the Google, you know, Spock talking computer. You it's know, actually next generation. Who's, the, you know, <laughs> who's, got, the, who's yeah. got the most storage market share in VMware, right? <laughs> right? But then, and then John said, you know what? VPlex is actually the transporter. So that's, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, the only way we can actually get get that in there. Because we were riffing on like, hey, there's no transfer, and then we're like, hey, Vplex. You know? Vplex is yeah, a transporter, GG absolutely. But you know, <laughs> keep keep in life. mind, you know, <laughs> the, the, the interesting context of what Star Trek got, which was kind of interesting, is not just the not just the transportation of the physical entity, but the transportation of state. Right, so when the person actually transports to the planet's surface, you know Captain Kirk, you know get, gets down to the, to the planet's surface. He still remembers everything that you know he was thinking at the moment and can you know pick up a conversation in mid sentence. Right, so the transportation of that state is ultimately critical as well, and that's why it's it's you know I said it's the application too. Right, it's the combinations of things like V Motion and V Plex. 
um, you know, that, that bring them together. vMotion taking that, that state from the server and the application uh, and migrating that, and then the information going with vPlex. But vPlex also gives you the ability, don't forget, to access information that might be somewhere else uh, as if it was local. I love this concept of state, and because the concept, the whole notion of state is changing with cloud mm. and virtualization. Oh, yeah. I mean, state used to be whatever was written on persistent disk, but it's oh, not sure. anymore, is it? And no, so, no, no. so, it's, um, it's interesting to hear a technologist from a quote-unquote storage company talking about this notion of state, because uh, uh, we see it in Wikibon as a big opportunity for a company like mm -hmm. yours. So, um, can you talk a little bit more about how you can add value in the way in which state is preserved and? And data is protected in yeah. the new model of data protection. Yeah, and you know, there's a couple of different interesting things, ways to think about it. And you know, a, a simple one, and going back to the integration and the ecosystem discussion a bit. Um, you know, very very simple concept is to take an application that might be running, say, an SAP instance, and make perhaps a clone of it and rapidly deploy it. Um, so, you know, to be able to do that, I, I think you can probably envision with, you know, technologies from five years ago how easy that is to do. But when, when that provisioning is going to be to a user in perhaps another city across the country, it, it starts to get more interesting. So, you know, if you were to take something like, let's say, a fluid ops uh, orchestration model and tie that together with vPlex and vMotion, right? Very interesting because you can, you can take all of that orchestration, make a copy of the application, ship it across a wire, and then have the information immediately accessible with technology like yeah. vPlex, and then if, if it's going to be persistent, have it migrate there uh, behind the scenes, or at yeah. least a, an instance of it migrate. So now, now you have the information and the state moving to an entirely new user somewhere else. You know, when you start to build in the protection model, the model's built in now if you, if you maintain that you know, coherency across that distance. So that's you know sort yeah. of the, the beginnings of the evolution of this. I mean, the future it looks really bright. I mean, that's the scenarios that you can dream up are fantastic. And, yeah. and one of the things we were talking with uh, Siki earlier, and then last yesterday we were talking about it briefly was, is the network really ready for this? Right. So we, she was talking about cloud moving from IT of provisioning this yeah. device, talking about this IP address, you know, normal network stuff. Right. And some are saying you know the network is more dynamic, converged networking is great, hardened top, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. But I mean, I know I just don't feel like the network is truly in a position to handle some of the innovations that virtualization's enabling. How do you see that? Am I in the right direction? How should people think about yeah. the network? Is it truly ready? Yeah, is the network truly ready for the the full vision? You'd have to you'd have to argue that it's not, but you have to argue that also that it's headed in the right directions. You know, there's there's a lot of work going on with some of our partners like Cisco and Sienna. Uh, in this regard, you know, Cisco, you know, certainly has been putting a ton of innovation into making the network uh, seem more flat, uh, which is which is clearly a benefit. Yeah. And there's been a lot of work going on in in terms of reducing latency, making the network a little bit more stateless, you know, uh, making it a little bit more uh, deterministic in terms of being able to perform those functions. But then then all of a sudden, in the world of cloud, in the world of multi cities, it has to go across you know a, a wide area network and across you know, carrier-based networks. I talked to one uh, SAP customer yesterday and we were talking about you know, some of this virtualization stuff and, and he said what's interesting about uh, virtualization on SAP environment is that it changed the game for him on his vendor relationship. So what he said was, I used to have HP, now I have Cisco mainly because of vBlock. Those mm -hmm. become a commodity decision for me because the, the vBlock benefit on the VMware yeah. side is so compelling Right. that he doesn't mind going from HP to Cisco on the Blade side. So he actually moved to Cisco Blades. Yep. Um, that changes kind of the game of how they're dealing with their vendors, right? I mean, yeah. in this case, it's HP and Cisco battling it out for the Blade business, but yeah. here's an IT guy making a commodity decision about Blades. Yeah. But Would you have said that but five years ago? No. No, of <laughs> yeah. course not, but there's, you know, there's an interesting observation to be made when you're talking about Blades on Cisco, too. It's not, it's not like you're going to just a generic Blade, right? You're going to the latest and greatest technology that takes full advantage of the cores, it takes full advantage of the extended in memory. In Cisco, you mean? And in the Cisco Blade, and by the way, the back end is fully integrated with the network. UCS and all right. that stuff. So, yeah. yeah, and and then you know if you take that and you and you fully encompass it in in you know basically a cabinet where you don't have to worry about what's inside of it, you know that's a beautiful thing. But now all of a sudden we were talking a moment ago about networks and the ability to extend that even more broadly, you know isn't isn't that the beauty? 
And, you know, I'll, let me give you an example of what we've done with Sienna uh, that I think is going to be very exciting about the carrier piece. And then not to mitigate Cisco's contribution because, you know, that's, that's a layer above, right? Yeah. Once you're down at that carrier level, Sienna has done a very interesting uh, body of work with VPlex and vMotion. What they did was they did a, a demonstration where they took an application, uh, that, and they, they had this, by the way, at EMC World last week. They took an application that was doing, say, 45 megas, megs per second of I.O. Uh, in, in one site, and they migrated the application uh, about 100 kilometers using just, just a bare-bones carrier technology over you know, Ethernet running over that. And the, the, the migration took about nine minutes or so. You know, and you could say, okay, 100 kilometers, not so bad. But the performance degraded horribly. You know, once they put VPlex under the covers, um, the performance went up almost immediately because of the caching capability, which was significant. And when the migration was done, even though they hadn't yet replicated the data, the, the application performance stayed the same on the other side of the link, which was significant point number one. Point number two was being able to maintain determinism in the network even during the migration. So what they can do is dynamically turn on additional bandwidth to make the application migration smoother. They took the time down from nine minutes down to under a minute uh, just by opening up some additional bandwidth that's probably sitting out there anyway, but then returning it to an available pool so that it can be used by another mm -hmm. migration or another application. So, you know, going back to your question, is yeah. the network ready? The networks are becoming ready. The, the yeah, technologies yeah. Are, are being developed. We asked developed. Pat Gelsinger that question actually last year here at yeah. our first cube at Sapphire, which was, who innovates, the apps or the network? And, you know, he says, I'm a network guy, so he believes it's a network. <laughs> but, you know, it's a kind of a nice, you know, balance, right? You yeah. get some pressure from the app side, breaks or hits a wall, network has to step right. up, so it's a little ratchet game. Yeah. Well, his yeah. point was subspace you know, network, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's right. <laughs> you know. His point was actually the infrastructure tends to lead the applications, yes. right? Yeah, and, well, and, I'm, and, yeah, and that was I'm so blanketing that. But I mean, he's right. I mean, I question the network. I don't think that's the case. I personally, you know, I'm going to disagree with Pat on that one, but I think there's a lot of force coming in from the app side. And look at SAP trying to be an app company. I mean, it's clear in this announcements, all the announcements. They're trying to be an app company to everybody. Right. Um, but I guess that's a lightweight thing to, to propose. There's nothing mm -hmm. meaty there, um, technically at least, uh, in my opinion. So, you know, I think the app sides are interesting. The composite catalogs of services are interesting. Yeah, but they are, you know, to, to the point we're just, just making, right? Aren't they indeed also driving down into the infrastructure? At least they're, they're not trying to become infrastructure, but they're trying to influence infrastructure mm -hmm. in a certain direction. I that's think that's compelling. I mean, that, the silicon announcement with the on design, by design was interesting mm -hmm. with Intel. I mean, pushing that stuff into the infrastructure is what they've been doing since what client server, right? I mean, right. SAP's trying to push that software or into the into the network into the silicon. So that right. to me is the big big interesting difference between say an EMC world and a, and a Sapphire. EMC world, a lot of infrastructure people there. Mm -hmm. um, and here, you know, it's a real business audience. The CEOs are talking the language of the wallet, and uh, mm -hmm. and, and you know even more so than, than than the EMC execs. But having said that, there's got to be a link between the infrastructure and the business, and that link is applications. Right. So how is that? Link tying the infrastructure through the applications to the business. How has that changed in you know the last decade? Let's say the the link from the applications to the to the infrastructure. Yeah. So you I know, mean, it, right? I mean, it, there's got to be business value somewhere yeah. in the infrastructure, right? And so well, is is that changing in a way? I mean, cloud obviously virtualization that is that is tangible. Well, I think where's the business value? The, I think the, the, the business value is you know they're looking to the infrastructure to provide you know greater returns on their investment. Mm. You know, I, mean, I I've yet to have a meeting here. Uh, with a customer where they haven't haven't said this Hana stuff is exciting. Where are you in the picture? Yeah, you know, and and I'm trying to you know give them a little bit of insight of some of the things we're doing. Give them a, take them back a week to EMC World and talk about things like Project Lightning and how critical that is to to the future. But you know, really start talking about that return on investment. And you know, it's it's ironic because they also then want to talk about not just Hana and EMC's play there. They want to talk about VMware, and and you know the VMware investment and, and why is virtualization so critical if, if let's say SAP is going to exploit everything that, the, that you can get out of a server, why do you need VMware? Right? And, and you talk about mobility and you talk about the, the even, even if you didn't achieve a, you know, a 20 to 1 uh, you know, ratio of, of virtual machines to physical server. you won't server, in a lot of cases. You won't right? in a lot of cases, yeah. but so what? I mean, yeah, even right. if you only achieved a 2 to 1, or in some cases like a HANA, maybe a 1 maybe to a 1. Maybe a 1 to 1, right. But if you, could, if you could still move it dynamically to simplify things like technology refresh or upgrades. 
right? If you can yes. tie this all together with an EMC infrastructure that can allow you to replicate your data. Yeah, or recover it. Yeah, or recover it. it. But, you know, let's, let's say you've got an upgrade to do, right? With, with our technologies, what you can do is you can make snapshot uh, of of information at a point of time, you can take another snapshot of that. You can start doing upgrades and see which one you know is is, is more closely as you roll your data forward, and you know eliminate the one you're not using and roll that back into uh, in, into your production system. And now you start looking at significant you know returns on investment, right? Um, you know they're they're looking at an environment where you know an upgrade might be you know equated in days to weeks to months sometimes. You know, depending upon how complex it is, how many modules, how much data is involved, how many different components have to be upgraded with it, and whether or not there's a technology refresh. All right, so you know the infrastructure refresh is painful, but if you start putting these things like SNAP technologies, mobility technologies into play, suddenly they can start seeing these things coming down to days, in some cases even hours, um, and, and that would include testing <laughs> to yeah. make sure that things things are, are reliable. So in the last 15 years, we've seen function move away from the host, the server, mm -hmm. out you know to the storage system, storage subsystem, and you talked about sharing, and that's obviously one of mm -hmm. the big motivating factors. But right. you know there are others, you know data protection as well. There seems to be somewhat of a movement back. I mean, you're seeing Oracle try to you know pull some of the function back. I mean, in some ways, Project Lightning is a recognition that that there's 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 more granularity in that IO stack and uh, yep. isn't I mean when I see pro things like project lightning I think of the relationship between project lightning and and HANA am I thinking about that the right way in other words you've got to you've got to make that resource at some point persistent you've got to yep. do something with that data that you've just processed and there's yeah. some value that comes out of that I want to now store that somewhere yeah, and I, share I, it I think there's a recognition that uh, you know I'm, I'm, I Pretty much agree with your point, but I think I'd maybe twist it a little bit different as the you know the EMC guy <laughs> and say there's a recognition that you know the information has to move closer to the user in certain cases, but there's still a hierarchy of information, right? Um, you, you know, s server memory is not infinite, um, and yes, it's growing, but it's still extremely expensive. And just like we've done with our fast technology and made a, made a very significant return on investment case that mm -hmm. says, you know, there's only a small percentage of your information that you really need in the fastest stuff, right? right. Um, the rest of it, you know, maybe maybe some portion of it you can keep in. It's a pyramid. Yeah, it's a pyramid. Yeah. Not quite we so love, fast. The we rest love of it the pyramids. In bulk. <laughs> so using it for so years, now what so. we've done is kind of extended the pyramid back out to the server. Now you you know you can have a couple of different tiers. You can have the server cache, you know, very expensive DRAM, but for that you know really critical stuff that is you know uh, really nascent and, and important, you know, critically important to your business as of right now. You can keep that in DRAM. The stuff that's maybe not quite so, uh, you know, current, but still very important to your business, you can keep in, you know, flash that happens to be part of Project Lightning. And then, you know, start to imagine fast taking that and saying, well, okay, this isn't being used quite so often. Let's put it out to something a little less uh, current, you know, um, perhaps though, by the way, with Project Lightning, you can also look at one other model which says, yeah, this is critically important, so we'll keep it in the server, but I also need it in another server, right? And this is a mechanism to get it there without having to consume the other network resources. This is SiliconAngle.tv. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, the worldwide leader in tech coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship uh, product where we go to events and get all the information. We're here with Dr. Rico from EMC, he's the Vice President of Advanced Technology, uh, talking about Project Lightning, caching memory, the future of storage is software. Uh, Doc, you know, expand on the storage is software. I just tweeted that out to the folks out there. There's a lot of details that are kind of in the weeds that people need to kind of understand because all the high level messages are all about fast data, you know, mobility, it's sexy, it sounds sizzly, right? So mm -hmm. the sizzle is there. The steak, the meat on the bone is all the little stuff that has to get done in the weeds, right? I mean, mm -hmm. storage is not, is, uh, when you get in the sausage factory, it's pretty complex. So you guys uh, eliminate some of that complexity. What, what's going on? What's some of the advanced tech that's going on with EMC, with virtualization uh, in SAP? Well, you know, there's a lot of things going on between EMC and SAP and, and even some of our other partners, and it, and it really starts with the fundamentals of being able to take these SAP instances, make them more dynamic, make them more portable, and that's, that's at the simplest sense. And, you know, the problems we're trying to solve are, you know, any, anywhere from trying to reduce the, the uh, software refresh cycles to the, to the upgrade cycles to, to, to everything else, but some of the other areas that we're trying to work on them with is, uh, 
you know, to make soft, uh, storage provisioning much much more simple, tie it into the uh, the landscape management that they're that they're developing. You know, their um, whether it's their ACC environment or whether it's their their new virtual landscape managers, and allow you you know one place to orchestrate what's going on in your infrastructure and make all of the complexity of what's going on in the infrastructure as transparent as possible. So there's a lot of things going on in in, in that area. As an advanced technologist, you have to have some vision. Uh, a point in the future, a moonshot, so to speak. You know, put a man on the mm-hmm. on Mars. You know, or you know, that kind of thing. I mean, do you have one for EMC? I mean, for you personally, like that Star Trek scenario with the storage. Would do you have that advanced scenario that you say, hey, if we can get to that, the world will be amazing. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it's it's that's a pretty interesting question. We keep focusing on Star Trek, and yeah, I mean, you know, you I'm, I've never been a, a Next Generation fan, although I do like Patrick Stewart. And, uh, <laughs> there was one episode where he talks about gigaquads of information, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> trying to imagine what a gigaquad yeah. is, yeah. but, you know. You guys I, are doing some great work. I mean, yeah. Joe Tucci said you got to see the trends early, you pick them, and you guys yeah. have made some great calls, but, you know, you got to, you're running the advanced technology, you got to have a view and say, hey, we'll get there, we're going to get there. Yeah. I mean, is there a moonshot out there for you? Well, you know, I think if you follow the Star Trek, the Star Trek vision, some of the things that are really interesting is that they can access information from anywhere, um, and and you know do almost real time analytics on that information. Right? They can collect information on a planet's surface, and you know some science officer back on the ship is still processing it. And by the way, at some space station, some other scientist is suddenly you know processing that as well and you know this is kind of i think the you know the the, the glory of the of the cloud vision as well when where yeah. big data meets cloud it's being able to you know collect data from anywhere and, and have it accessed by anybody else to perform whatever operations they are you know is, that that they need to do and when you tie that in beautifully with the uh, you know the the server virtualization message and the application virtualization you know take sanjay merchandani's uh, you know vision of it as a surface service right? Right. You can take your, you know, your iPad or, or the, you know, the PC in front of you here, and click open an application and be processing on some something that was, you know, collected in real time somewhere else on the show floor, you know, moments ago, you know. So, you know, I think that's the vision is to make make information more ubiquitous. Um, but still have all of the, the dependency, reliability characteristics that it That's completely have. automating and making all the configuration management, all the automation completely transparent, yep. seamless data portability. Right. I mean, so, you know, I, you know, Apple, you know, Steve, Steve gets a lot of credit for some really good things. And, you know, one of the, you know, the innovation of the iPod certainly wasn't it. The innovation of iTunes was, right? right. And if we think about this new vision of IT as a service, you know, the iTunes and the App Store yeah. are, are exactly what that's about. And you shouldn't have to worry when you click on that app, you shouldn't have to worry where that app's coming from and where the information that's going to support it's coming from. That should be all automated underneath. Uh, Notwithstanding, again, the information has to be secure. It has to, you know, live up to some, you know, business characteristics and attributes that you associate it with. And Dave, you've been following EMC like, for years. I mean, you go tell the stories about, you know, going down Route Nine. Was it, you know, in the old days? <laughs> Mercer Road, Mercer, Mercer Road, Road yeah. it was. Uh, you know, and, and were you so, at Mercer Road? Uh, I was. I visited there. I remember? But I, Road, I came yeah. in a little after uh, that. I mean, they've come a long way, Dave. Just what's your? I mean, obviously, the current EMC. We had a great time at EMC World. What's what's your? Your take on AMC right now, obviously, the software company had sets out with Pat. What's changed so much in the past few years? Why is EMC so successful right now? Well, EMC has transformed itself many, many times, Doc, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, it was a memory company. It, then it started to dabble into storage. It has, it had a near disaster in storage way, way back when, when it was OEMing disk drives, and the disk drives had a bad batch, and almost put the company in Chapter 11. But you know, Dick Egan, in his way, said, I don't care. We are going to fix this problem. And customer, you know, Pat, uh, Pat, 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 Pat uh, Gelsinger talks about the maniacal focus on the customer. That was really sort of legend at EMC when they went in and spent a lot of money fixing that problem. And then, you know, then boom, symmetrics happened. And then the transformation happened when they bought DG and Clarion. And, and now we're just, and then VMware. VMware changed everything. To me, that is the biggest change. VMware put EMC um, in the class of the Oracles, the Microsofts, the IBMs, the SAPs, the HP. As Joe Tucci said, the littles are the big. They're, they're, the little they're, are the big, but they are going, in my opinion, I've, I've said this a number of times yeah. on theCUBE, uh, we've, we've said that EMC is going to have a $100 billion market cap by 2015. It's going to be one of the bigger of the bigs, you know. Um, and so, you know, now we're seeing that, and, and 
And then now the other thing is the acquisition strategies, right? With Isilon, mm -hmm. Green Plum, and Data Domain. EMC has not been traditionally known as a growth company, and it's trying to change that perception. So it's quite impressive. Um, um, as you know, we're impressed. We love EMC. <laughs> Great management. They spend a lot of time on the cubes. We love people who come on the cube. And they're some, yeah, so, the smartest um, people. You know, Dr. You know, Stonebreaker uh, was was mentioned. He's been a cube alumni. Michael Stonebreaker, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Doc, you're a um, multiple cube alum now. Is what third <laughs> yeah. time? Yeah, in, it's in the cube? Third, third or fourth. Third or fourth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to go back and look. EMC but, World Original. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we have a little, little tr cube trophy for you. You know, the, <laughs> like Stanley Cup. You know, names engraved on them. Yeah, um, we keep threatening that we have to do that. <laughs> yeah. Someone. We need a volunteer to do that. Yeah. Someone out there watching, please Derek, help are you us. Watching, you need help. <laughs> um, so, Doc, when you come to an event like this, what yeah. are you? What are you looking for? Is it sort of more tactical stuff, helping the the EMC sales guys? You know. You know, uh, uh, to get transactions done, or you're looking for okay, what's hand yeah. hand of me? What, what's uh, what's well, your Well, I typically your have, the, have the the latter kind of in my pocket before I come here, and I'm but I'm looking to see how people are reacting to those new messages. But you know, and I and I try frankly to come in under a little bit of stealth. But one of the biggest values I get is the opportunity to talk to customers and prospects. You know, so the sales guys are here with with their teams. You know, they'll they typically know I'm coming, and they're going to set up meetings. And I love to hear. What are the problems they're facing, and what are they looking for when they come to the show? So I can steal some cycles to go look at that as well if I haven't seen it already. But then I also like to just walk the show floors and talk to the other vendors and find out, you know, what are the customer problems that that they're taking, especially some of the smaller players. The smaller players are typically trying to jump in a niche, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they, they they see an opportunity that somebody bigger isn't meeting, and you know, I want to understand where's where are they coming from with the problem. You know, is there something unique that, that uh, you know, maybe somebody hasn't quite figured out yet or they're trying to maybe leapfrog that, that next opportunity? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so we, we look for those things. Um, but it's really about listening to the customer problems and the customer opportunities. Uh, that's my big, uh, big takeaway from these events. So, you know, I, I've got my iPad with my, you know, my penultimate app and I'm, <laughs> you know, scribbling, you know, feverishly, uh, you know, and I've probably got 40 or 50 pages of notes from from just today alone just you know different different things that I've that I've observed or listened to or heard and then uh, you know obviously talking speaking with guys like yourselves you know there's there's always an interesting viewpoint on, on what's happening when, when we get that that feedback as well the questions you ask sometimes are you know, <laughs> crazy. We know. We're yes, the cube, but this is you know. But we want to extract this, like the, all your knowledge, and share it. And as we learned at EMC World, uh, sharing is power. Uh, from Whitney at Box.net, a new new partner of yours, uh, mm -hmm. had the quote of the week: um, "Knowledge was power." Now sharing is power. So we like to combine that both. So yeah, thanks for coming on. So the that cube. that'll be one of my big goals is to to leave you with a quote that you guys can. We need nuggets talk of about. knowledge. We want to share it. I mean, your your brain needs to be put on yeah. the table. Well, you know, it's yeah. always a We're pleasure. We're like doctors, you know. And if I'm ever at a, you know, at a conference, you know, please feel free. Yeah. Great, Doc. We're here with Dr. Rico, visionary, talking technology, and, uh, and we are live. Sapphire now. I'm Dave Vellante. I'm John Furrier. Great conversation. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. Appreciate it coming on.